today on the CTV News at 5. It's exciting, it's happy, and I'm glad to see all my friends again. It's back to class for thousands of Southern Alberta students. Plus, a reminder for motorists about school zone speeds. And a medicine hat man is given another trial after being found guilty of his wife's death. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. Summer vacation is officially over. Thousands of students headed back to school today, a day filled with excitement and nerves. Kids at Senator Buchanan Elementary School returned to class after recess. Many were still burning off all the energy they had built up from their summer holidays. The kids say they're excited to be back and are happy to see their friends again. It was my first year going up stairs. It was exciting, but it was also scary. And so um, when it got all settled, it was really exciting and fun. And it was really great. Everyone is so excited to be here, right? I mean, um, we met in uh, May just to kind of introduce uh, the new teacher. And I think they've been talking to moms and dads ever since then about going to school. And it's exciting. It's happy. I'm glad to see all my friends again. But I kind of do miss the summer just a little bit. Now with a new school year comes new rules for motorists once again. Motorists are reminded school zones are now back in effect in the city. Police will be targeting right-of-way violations, parking infractions and speeders. Officers say motorists have been following the posted speed limit so far, but parents have a message for motorists. Zone in particular has been very good. Uh, we've seen a couple that uh, may have been going a little bit faster than they should have that weren't paying attention and we had to kind of stick the, the hand out to get them to stop for the kids. Just take your time and go slow in the playgrounds areas so that my child can come home safely. Please slow down. There's been lots of people that go by here pretty quick and just remember that they're all excited. They're not watching, so please just slow down. They're excited. They're not really watching the roads because they're so excited to be back to school. So it's important that drivers slow down and, and pay attention to the kids that are, that are out on the roads. And while kids and parents are ex excited to be heading back to school, classrooms around the province have had to cope with cuts, meaning more kids and less teachers. But in Lethbridge, things are looking a little brighter. Jeanette Roche explains. Nearly 10,000 public school students in Lethbridge headed back to class. And close to 200 of them are new to School District 51. Well, we're very excited, a little nervous to be going back to school today, starting kindergarten for the first day. Are you excited, baby? Mm -hmm. She's a little nervous. This kindergartner may be jittery about meeting her teacher and classmates, but the provincial budget is the last thing from her mind. With 11,000 new students province-wide, larger cities like Calgary and Edmonton are feeling the impact where the number of teachers can't keep up with the amount of kids. But it's a much brighter picture here in Lethbridge. One thing that wasn't impacted by the budget was allocation of staffing for professional staff as well as support staff and so certainly we're not seeing any reduction in teacher-student ratio and in fact I, we have a modest increase in our assignment of support staff so that's all really good news for the classroom. In fact 25 to 30 new teachers were hired by the school district despite a slight budget decrease from the province. In total 98 million dollars was allocated toward education last March. This year, our government actually increased funding uh, education, uh, K-12 education. And uh, although it's not as much as uh, some folks would like, is that we didn't take any money away from the instruction. And every new student walking in the door this year is going to be funded to the same level that they were last year. And while the provincial budget hasn't impacted K-12 classrooms in Lethbridge, it's a different story with the city's post-secondary institutions. The university is currently reviewing reduced work days and has suspended a few programs. Over at Lethbridge College, 2,100 new students were getting their orientation. Each year, the college sees a rise in enrollment while their budget goes down. 
In an effort to balance their $82 million budget after a drastic government cut, a decision was made last spring to suspend a couple of programs. But right now, it hasn't affected our student services at all. So we, we're still offering the same, the same student services that we have before. So that's, that's what we're focusing on. Jeanette Roche, CTV News, Lethbridge. It was also the first day of school for students in High River. After far from normal summer, students and teachers are scrambling to get everything together. The Catholic school system in High River was hit the hardest. They operate two schools in the community, one elementary, the other for grades 7 to 12. Both schools were hit very hard by the flooding. Neither of them was able to reopen today. As a result, though, the public system offered space to the Catholic system. But it's nice to be back. I'm happy that I'm not in the house anymore. It's kind of nice to be with, see friends and teachers. Everyone's more excited to come back and we're happy to see everyone. And there's, we're such a small school that we're all kind of like a family now. So it's nice to see everyone and how they are and how they're dealing with everything. But a very hot start for back to school, Dory. Yeah, it was. Uh, today was a little warm. I mean, 26 degrees was our maximum high, but then we kind of slid down the scale. As you'll see when we get into the body of the weather, we have cooled down a bit. Had a few sprinkles as well, but area of high pressure is going to be redeveloping uh, starting tomorrow. Our barometric pressure is already rising, so that bodes well. More heat's on the way and more details. I'll tell you all about it in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Dory. Brad Cooper, a former medicine hat man convicted of murdering his Edmonton-born wife, has been granted a new trial in Raleigh, North Carolina. A Google map image of where her body was discovered was found on Cooper's computer. But as Ed Crump reports, a key reason why a new trial has been granted is because Cooper's lawyers were unable to call their own expert regarding that piece of evidence. Three months after Nancy Cooper's body was found near a Cary construction site in 2008, one neighbor applauded the arrest of her husband, Brad. Nancy Cooper's life and death had an impact on many in Cary, and her husband's trial, full of salacious testimony about arguments and affairs, captivated the triangle. Brad Cooper was convicted almost entirely on circumstantial evidence, and one of the prosecution's most important pieces of evidence, a Google map search allegedly done by Cooper the day before the murder that zeroed in on the place the body was found. It might have been an important piece of evidence, but there was lots of other evidence in the case other than this. But the Court of Appeals says the judge in the case erred when he didn't allow a defense computer expert to testify. He believed the Google map search was planted on Cooper's laptop. More importantly, the unanimous three-judge decision says that violated Cooper's constitutional rights. The foreman of the jury actually wrote a letter to the media outlets in which he explained that the single piece of evidence that caused this jury to arrive at their verdict was the Google map. So any argument to the contrary is simply not true. Lethbridge pub owners are still assessing the impact on business, but say a move to crack down on drunk drivers seems to have affected attitudes about drinking and getting behind the wheel. It's been one year since police began getting tougher on drivers who blow between .05 and .08. Some pub owners say whatever reason, customers seem to be putting more emphasis on eating and less on drinking. Terry Vote reports. It's been a year since Alberta introduced some of Canada's toughest impaired driving laws. And while many pub owners are reluctant to talk about how the changes have affected their liquor sales, they will talk about how customers have responded. Um, at first I think it was a little bit of a sort of an eye-opener. The owner of Honker's Pub, Vicki Vandenhoek, says she's noticed people are more cautious. Kind of monitoring how much they're having, how, when they're having it, and probably having more food uh, when they are having a few drinks. Pub owners say the combination of lower tolerance levels and higher penalties have helped to increase awareness about drinking and driving. And in Lethbridge, at least, some pub owners say they've made adjustments to their business because of that. For example, Front Row Pub has just completed renovations, adding a full-service kitchen. Our name has changed from Front Row Pub to Front Row Pub and Grill, so people know that we are a destination food place. Um, as well as a liquor place. David Caruso says he thought about expanding the kitchen and food menu for years, but the legal changes to drinking laws pushed him to finally do it. People are uh, wanting to have something to eat before they have a drink now. 
Caruso says he's still not sure how the economics will work out, but has definitely noticed a trend. And if the experience in other provinces is any indication, people are drinking less when they go out. And that bar owners here can expect the tougher laws to spark a change in lifestyle, not just a temporary drop in sales. Terry Boat, CTV News, Lethbridge. A longtime high school teacher and community volunteer has joined the list of Lethbridge City Council candidates. Joey Shackelford says he believes councillors need to balance the best interests of the city with those of the taxpayer. A Southern Alberta couple is doing their happy dance today. David and Janice Race from Warner won $100,000 on the Lotto 649 draw extra. The pair bought the August 7th winning ticket from Warner Foods. David and Janice plan to pay off a few bills and then take a winter vacation. Speaking of money, the Free the Fuzz campaign has wrapped up for another year. It took almost 30 hours of hard work at the North and South Walmart locations in Lethbridge to collect donations for Special Olympics. But Lethbridgeites dug deep and helped raise over $22,000, which will help go towards athletes on their way to the games. The Lethbridge Regional Police would like to thank everyone who came out to support the great cause. It's not the kind of thing most people have on their bucket list. But for one Southern Alberta beekeeper, wearing a bee beard has always been a long-time goal. And folks attending Chinook Honey's annual Harvest Festival are still buzzing about it. We have more tonight's report from Farm TV. To add a little more excitement to Chinook Honey's 2013 Harvest Festival, owner Sherry Andrews promised to do something she had always wanted to do, have a bee beard. Well, the bee beard was something I have personally wanted to try for many years uh, as a, perhaps a personal challenge, but also because um, to me it really emphasizes all the good things about honeybees and the fact, and, and it really is something to help erase uh, people's fears of bees. When you can actually see bees covering me, my face, my, my neck, um, and it, it just obviously tells you, well, they're not that a big thing to be afraid of. So what did it feel like? It's interesting because at first it tickles a little bit and then uh, what's interesting because bees have small claws on uh, their legs and so they actually will grip with them and so as they're gripping on your skin you can feel it but then what you maybe don't realize and what's interesting the first time you do it is that they grip and then they get uh, joined by 20 other honeybees. So there's actually, you're supporting a chain of 20 bees on your skin, not just one. And so it can have a slight sensation of a sting. Farm TV is brought to you by DA Building Systems. An update for oil as the market's kicked off again. Here are the day's closing numbers. Straight ahead though, Dory's got your forecast. Stick around for that.